If you're doing a journal club presentation, the first thing you need is a paper. Make sure you choose a paper that is focused and has sort of like an obvious uh, conclusion. The worst thing is trying to sort of like mold a story from a paper that kind of just goes nowhere. Ideally, this would be a paper that you have found interesting and you've come across naturally. But if not, go searching for them on something like Connected Papers, on LitMaps, on uh, Illicit.com, and then have a look to make sure that it's not a review article. A review article discussion can go on for hours. So this is what I would do. This is a paper here that I have found and this is something that in the past my research group would have been very interested in. So this is what we're going to turn into something like this which is a presentation and you get this link, this template down below because um, why start from scratch? I've done it for you. Now this is where I would start. The first thing you need to do is head over to this and read it from beginning to end. If you're doing a journal club presentation, you have to make sure you're intimately familiar with everything that's going on here. And I would be using this template here that I've produced, and I would be taking notes under the sections that I've put here. The normal sort of like structure for a journal club presentation goes like this. You've got your title slide, you've got this. Now this is my sort of like own twist on things. I like to have a what's in it for me. I think about the audience and I think why would they be interested in this paper? The way you give like the best talk ever is by making sure that it is completely applicable to your audience and that it has a surprising twist or something that is a little bit uh, controversial, a little bit surprising or new or unfamiliar and you'll say to them something along the lines of I'm going to convince you that you'll not look at something the same way. I hope that I will transform your understanding of and today I will change, challenge your assumptions about. Those are great ways to hook your audience in early on because remember you're competing with all of their mobile phones and they're like oh god oh god oh god more emails more emails but you're going to be like hey guys listen to this because it's going to be amazing. So that's the first slide. Then we've got introductions, then we've got methods, then we've got results, then we've got results analysis if that's applicable, then we've got results and limitations. What didn't you like about this um, experimental uh, setup? What didn't you like about the analysis is your ability to put that critical twist on what you're presenting. And then we've got implications, implications for your work, for your group's work, for the audience. That's what it's all about. And also we've got the future. What does the future look like because of this paper? Has something shifted? Has something changed? Have you changed something about the way you do something? That's what people are really interested in. And then we've got this final slide. The final slide, by the way, is so important. So many people leave this out. The final slide is just like a I am done signal. Because remember, this is a little bit of a performance and you need a little spot for them to clap, like that little golf clap that no one's really sort of like enthusiastic, but they know they need to do it. Something like that. So you need to give them a clap signal and this is it, just a thank you slide and then hey, let's chat, like let's talk about the paper I've just presented. Um, and that's why that's there. I always include it. I've seen so many awkward moments where they get to this and people don't know they finished and they're like, do, do I clap? Am I done? And then some brave person goes first and is like, yes, we are done. Um, but have a clap slide. Clap slide goes at the end. Okay, so that's what we're sort of like basing our research presentation on or our journal club presentation on. Now it's about reading and going through and highlighting the bits that would fit into those sections. So as I'm reading this, I'd be taking notes. I'd be like, oh, that's interesting. That goes into the method section. Um, in this bit, they used silver nanowires and spun multi-ward carbon nanotubes. Okay, that's good. That's the sort of thing I'll be doing. Just bullet points, just very simple because then, then we're going to sort of like flesh it out a little bit later. But that's what I would be doing. I'd be going through, reading it. Make sure you read it two or three times because remember, it's not the presentation that is worrying, it's the questions afterwards. And if it looks like you haven't really read it, then people are going to be a little bit mad at you and you're going to feel awkward and everything. But there's an important thing. If your paper has supplementary information, make sure that you actually look at this because the reason you're giving your presentation is to go deeper than what someone would do if they were just scanning through it themselves. So has the supplementary information got anything interesting in there? This one does. This may be something I may want to sort of 
like talk about in the presentation that otherwise I wouldn't talk about, um, you know, in a uh, literature review that I'm writing or anything like this. This is about going a little bit deeper than usual. So that's how I would do it. Now, with AI tools, it gets a little bit easier, I'll be honest with you. So one thing I did to start with, let's go back to the presentation. These sort of like, you know, the what's in it for me, surprising results has to be in there to hook them in if you can put it in. Then this introduction. Now, your audience really dictates where you start this. If you are doing something very niche and you are not talking to that niche audience, you need to explain what it's about. But if you're giving a presentation to your research group and they know exactly why you're doing what you're doing, don't go in really sort of like high level. It's boring for everyone, but you do have to just sort of like start at the right point. So I would take this and make sure it's really applicable to the knowledge of your audience, but we can make it a little bit easier. You can see I've used ChatGPT and I've said, essentially read all of this. So the first thing I did was copy and paste that paper into ChatGPT and I said, read this and say red when done. And it did that. So there it is. Okay, there it is. Then it says red. And then it said, I'm doing a journal club presentation. Can you give me three bullet points to introduce this paper? It kind of didn't really understand what I wanted. It was a bad prompt on my part. So it's given me like what the results were. I really just want the background. So I say, give me three bullet points to introduce the background of this article. And that's exactly what it's done here. So I've taken these and I've just copied and pasted it over to the introduction section. This is far too wordy, by the way. PowerPoints should be to support what you're saying, not for people to have to read. So I know that I've got limitations of ITO, so I may just sort of like get rid of that. I may actually get rid of most of this. So I may just say, Marty will come now and choose, and single will come now as promising candidates. I may just sort of like get rid of all this because I can talk about that instead of people having to read it. Hybrid material solutions, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna actually get rid of all of that as well. So we can talk about integrating two things together. Brilliant, this is what it's all about now. Really sort of refining that slide um, and you wanna make it as visual as possible. So words aren't always the best thing. So maybe I could sort of use these bullet points and then put something visual here. Maybe something from the paper. Let's look to see if there's anything that I can use. Where are you, Mr. Paper? All right, here you are. So let's have a look. Let's see if they've got something I could use. Okay, yeah, let's have a look at this. So let's have a look and grab this. And I'm just gonna grab that. I'm gonna capture it as copy as clipboard. And then I'm gonna go across and hopefully this works. I'm gonna paste it, there we are. So there's something from the paper, from the introduction. And then this is something I could talk about, you know, the silver nanowires and carbon nanotube stuff. So. That is how I would start the introduction. Then it's all about methods, okay? Methods are very important because that's the next thing people are really interested in. So I'm looking at the study design and then I'm using the notes that I've created beforehand. However, I want it to be as visual as possible. So I would head over to the paper again and I would just look for the schematic that quite often accompanies the method section in this field um, and just see if that's suitable for you as well. So this is really what I want. This is everything they've used, but don't do what I'm about to do. Do what I'm about to show you after. So copy and paste in. We're gonna get rid of this for the moment because I actually don't need this. I just wanna get rid of everything and just have this. So I can use this figure as a way of sort of like talking about the study methods. However, don't just plonk it like this. Don't just go like plonk and think that's good enough. There are two things that you need on PowerPoint to make your story and your sort of like presentation much more engaging. And you can forget everything else, every animation, everything that is in PowerPoint other than these two things. Trust me, I've done postdocs presentations. I've done it to really important people and places. And this is everything I've ever used. And the two things are, the first one is go up to draw. No, go up to design. No, go up to insert and look for shapes. And I'm looking for a square and I am getting rid of most of this stuff. I'm gonna have a square over, let's have a look, over this bit and I'm gonna turn it into a white square with no outline. How do you get rid of outlines? They've changed it, no outline, here we are. So there I'm going to actually have 
it all blanked out apart from the things that I'm talking about. And you'll see why in a minute, because when you put up something on a slide, it is just like a shock to the audience where they just get all this information thrown at them at once and despite you going through it, they feel overwhelmed and they shut off. So you have to reveal it to them one bit at a time. That was a good noise because otherwise they're going to get overwhelmed. And then I go up here and obviously I can make, you know, another little box over here. But essentially I'm going to talk about this bit first and then I'm going to reveal this. And the only animation you ever need in PowerPoint really uh, is appear. So I'm going to click here and I'm just going to make it appear. That's number one. Click on the second box I want to disappear. No, dumb. Ugh, don't do that. I want it to disappear. Come on now. Come on now, disappear. That's what I want. And I want this one to go down and disappear. So you can see then when I do the slideshow, I can be like talky, 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 talk. And then there we go. And it helps your audience through the process and the story that you're trying to tell. So it's the first thing you need is disappearing white boxes. It's not rocket science, but it works and it's simple. Trust me. Okay, the next thing we need is results and uh, discussion. Now, results, um, I like to split up because initially I like to sort of like just show them what happened. Then I like to show a little bit of analysis, either analysis they've done or analysis that I've done on top of this. And then I like to talk about why their results are rubbish. Um, and that just gives a nice sort of like understanding uh, to the audience of the details. Now, you go through your uh, peer reviewed paper and you look for results. It may be tables, it may be graphs, it may be stuff. There's a lot of schematics here. So let's just talk about how you present these properly. So we've talked about that one way of doing it, which is having disappearing white boxes. The second way, bonk, the second way of doing this is to use big red circles. Trust me, big red circles and big red arrows are what you can use to make someone look at where you're actually talking about. It's really hard when you put something up like this and you say, um, in you can see in section D, um, you can see in uh, E, you can say, no, forget about that. Actually draw people's eyes to where you want them to look. Honestly, it really works. And I've done this for all of my stuff. I'm going to insert and I'm going to insert either an arrow or a circle. So I'm going to say, look, at, let's say this bit, look at this bit. And I'm gonna make it as fat as possible and I'm gonna make it as obvious as possible. There we are, that's what I want to appear. I want things appearing and disappearing as I'm talking about certain parts of the results. And another thing I would use, actually if I go here and put um, set as default line, then next time I put in another line, it's just gonna be like that. And so I always just had all of these different default red shapes. Another one is this circle. So if I wanted them to look at this bit, for example, um, I would go up and I would say no fill and I would say shape outline and I have it as red as possible and I'd have it as fat as possible as well, boom. Then as I'm talking about things, I wanna say, okay, this one I want to appear and then I want this one to appear or I want this one to disappear or whatever it is. We wanna actually just show people where to look on the slide, otherwise they're gonna be confused as F. Didn't say the F word but you're, it's in your mind, so it's still there. Um, there we are, that's what we're doing. Okay, next thing is looking at results and analysis. You can do that, look at limitations. With limitations, this is your time to be very critical of what you have just read. Honestly, people like a little bit of controversy. After showing them all this, sometimes it can get a bit boring. So you can say, I actually don't like this study for these reasons, this is why. People love that. And when they smell a little bit of blood in the water, they'll be on your side and they'll be like, oh yeah, we don't like it too, everyone jumps in. Implications is so important. Make sure that you understand what the work means for your work or your research group, or the directions of the field, or any wider implications that this paper has, because you've chosen a paper, hopefully, that is actually interesting to talk about. Something that interests you, something that surprised you, um, and then we're gonna talk about the future directions. How does this change what you are doing? That's what people are interested in. We're gonna make it now very, very personal to you and to your audience. What does that mean for them? 
What does it mean for you? And what does it mean uh, just going forward, like on a personal level? Stop talking about the field, just make it really, really relevant to them, relevant to them. And then you go here and this is your clap slide. Clap, 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 everyone's happy. And now you have to put up with all of the questions, which I'm sure people have a load about. So that is how you do a journal club presentation. If you like this video, now you need to go watch how to make killer presentations because that will help you present with confidence. Go check it out.